Hi, nice to meet you. My name is Marion Landry and I'm a Francophone artist originally from Montreal. I have been living and producing work since 1999 as an uninvited guest on the traditional and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Swale Tui people. My work investigates materiality, abstraction, and perception through the formal qualities of painting. Often produced to be in conversation with the specificity of a site, either it be the architectural detail and or the artificial or natural lighting conditions, my painting shifts in appearance contingent on their surroundings and the viewer's position to emphasize the abstract nature of human perception, expanding beyond the visual to include subtleties of feeling and awareness. I earned my BFA in 2016 from Emilicar University of Art and Design and decided to come back to do my MFA after working independently for a few years in my studio on Industrial Street in Vancouver. My thesis research initially focused on a desire to expand painting beyond the surface of the canvas to include the structural elements in which a painting is produced. At the time, I was interested in dismantling the hierarchy and unifying the elements used, such as painting studies and painted objects, as part of the painting process. To me, these elements constituted the communities in which a painting had evolved, and I view them as equally important components. The first installation I presented for critique was assembled as a wall tableau and included a large-scale painting, six painting studies, as well as painted objects. After hours trying to adjust the tableau, I struggled to bring it to life. The gallery lighting worsened this condition by flattening the installation even more. The lighting conditions and overall atmosphere of the gallery, I felt, needed adjustment to better support my paintings and intention. As a result, my focus began to turn toward a greater awareness of space, the physical environment of the gallery, the pictorial space within my canvases, as well as the mental space needed to evolve and thrive within the MFA program. I spent considerable amount of time wandering around the campus documenting the many different lighting conditions, both artificial and natural. While doing so, a desire to create artwork responsive to the specific context arise. Why should I limit myself to the conditions of the graduate gallery when the whole campus could offer a much wider variety of conditions that my work would respond to? My sense of light and space is strongly informed by a parallel career as a 3D architecture visualization specialist. I spent two decades in the virtual world bringing life to digital architecture to help tell a story about its design. In the virtual world, I became quite efficient at using light to produce atmospheric impact, emotion, and meaning to a world that is completely devoid of such conditions. When experiencing a room, I have an acute awareness of the conditions offered both by the architecture of the space and the atmosphere created by its lighting. The LED ceiling mounted light strip installed across the campus might work well in an office, for example. But for an art school, it's an unappealing solution. It produces a flat greenish brightness that imposes itself on every corner and it's unartistic and flattens any artwork view in it, in my opinion. First, I turn my focus to natural light with a special attention to the pattern created by the sun penetrating the building through a series of windows and skylights. I had observed an interesting pattern during an early walk around the campus when I sat down in a sculpture gallery located on the far east side of the Michael O'Brien Exhibition Commons. The pattern creating this interesting series of bright lozenges on the wall and I wanted to install work that could be framed by it. However, when working with the sun element, you have to let go of control as there are no guarantee on it showing up for its performance, which is what happened during the first iteration of my installation. With only two days available in the gallery space, the sun never really showed up and I was not able to visualize or properly document what I was after. But with a few details ashed out, I requested a longer period in the gallery, met with the building engineers to turn off the automatic lighting system, and jump through all the necessary hoops to achieve what I needed. Document the pattern of light slowly framing my work on the wall and animating the series of oil painted boxes affixed to the wall. With winter and darkness upon me, I turned my focus on a source of light that was more reliable and for the next two installation, I worked with artificial lighting in the grad gallery space. 
the collection of paintings presented as part of Blue Elements were based on the memory of a recent trip to Greece where I observed the ever-changing color of the sea, which was constantly shifting depending on the light and weather condition, as well as my viewing angle. Trying to recapture the colors of warm, peachy lighting condition of Greece in my Vancouver studio proved quite challenging. While casting a grayish blue light to the studio, it was almost impossible for me to remember the warmth of the Greek sun and mostly impossible to mix and view colors in his grayish light. To help encapsulate the warm light spectrum of Greece, I brought artificial lights to the studio and I warm up the space using gels. After that experience, I could never separate the experience of making from the experience of viewing and decided to include gels in the gallery to warm up the gallery. It was important for me to analyze the impact it would have on the viewing and perception of my work. As I learned from my installations, a shift also happened in the studio. I became uninterested with colors, seeing it as an obstacle in viewing the light quality. I wanted my installation to simplify itself of extra content and became a space for contemplation, where one could sit and release the business of their mind into a space voided of content. At the time, I had started my cross-country skiing season, and I wanted to bring the calmness and serenity I found in the mountains into my installation. I saw my palette shift toward white hues, as well as simplification of content within my painting to a very minimal geometrical shapes, focusing my attention to the subtleties of the material and its quality to optical effects, or if I put it in my own words, for its potential of becoming container for lights. My installation title White Element is a good example of this shift. In using the grad gallery space, I hung a single large format painting on the back wall. The painting offers a simple geometrical form and a limited color palette. The ambience of the gallery was altered using a mix of cool tones on the left side and warm tones on the right side by affixing gels directly on the ceiling strip lights. The lights cast warm and cool tone on both the paintings and the walls of the gallery, completely changing the space atmosphere. The painting was strategically positioned on the wall at the intersection of the cool and warm light. The visual impact on the painting was that the right side appeared warmer than the left side, reproducing a gradient effect already present within the pigment of the painting. The painting was very minimal and felt vaporous in the space. The painting's warm tone appeared to expand to the walls of the gallery. What looked like a pale lavender shadow was cast on the left side of the painting, while on the right side a more yellow shadow emerged. In contrast, the top edge of the canvas appeared to be glowing, creating a strong parallel to the atmospheric effect observed when sun is reflecting on snow, which was the inspiration for this piece. A sense of calm was felt in the gallery space, as the viewer was invited to sit and contemplate. The perception of the painting continually shifted between surface and space, offering a sense of time or mise en abyme created by the recurring rectangle shapes. With the return to spring and sunny days, I did one last installation to close the first year of my MFA. For this installation, I returned to a conversation between painting and natural light. Located on the south side of the building, room B4130, provided great light penetration, creating an interesting losange of light onto the wall. Titled Diamonds for Winter Sun, the installation included both a painting and a video. The painting was created specifically for the specificity of the room. Using both glossy and matte finishes, the diamond-shaped pattern would become animated with the passage of natural light, altering the perception of the work. The video showcased the passage of sun onto the painting documented over a few hours using step-motion photography. What is becoming more apparent to me is my desire to alter the atmosphere for the viewer and the work to better control how my paintings are perceived. It is my intention to create an experience that involves more of the sense and means towards aptic perception. I can draw strong parallels with my experience of painting, an action that helps me transition into a state of presence and intuition, and my desire to provide a transformative experience for viewing. I believe that this style of installation offers a chance to become more aware of the conditions of the space and perhaps to the self while perceiving in it.
Thanks for watching.